was the one who first introduced me to the piano. My mom's mother, Polly, she's 83. She is pretty much incapable of doing anything on her own. Hi, Grandma. See, I brought Dakin. I brought Dakin back because I said I would. And we're going to take you for a little ride in your chair. We're going to find a piano. And I think Dakin's going to play. How are you? Hi, Grandma. <laughs> you love seeing Dakin, don't you? You know, her hair is amazing. How full it still is. <laughs> um, she was diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia, and that is the condition that inhibited her ability to speak. Some people are old at 70, and other people are relatively young at 90. It's just it's the misfortune of the way your life plays out. It's, it's, uh, it, it's your karma, it's your fate. And we don't really subscribe to that very well, that we somehow feel that we should be uh, getting the same deal that everybody else got. And what we focus on, of course, in our society are those high-functioning EDs. I'm here because I feel strongly about the need for medical practitioners and caregivers to understand what slow medicine is all about. And I believe that working together, we, the elderly, our family members, and you in the healthcare profession can overcome the fear and stress that so many of us encounter today. Ray Medidi, <laughs> I have often heard described as, as, as a firecracker, uh, is very much aging like a firecracker. I mean, she turned, uh, let's see, Grandma Didi turned 86 yesterday. At some point before I'm no longer able to think clearly myself, um, it's my intention to refuse food and water. And this is the tricky thing for families. I mean, families say, well, uh, somebody will tell me when I need to start preparing. That, that telling sometimes never gets to happen. The next thing is the call to go to the emergency room. I've written this out in a great deal of detail. Down the line, if I lose it mentally, I'm indicating uh, I want something different. I don't. Have you talked with Dad and Mary about it, that? Mostly Mary. About Your that? dad is a little more reluctant to believe this. But, but it's written here and signed, and he has read it. And Mary, Mary knows. She knows. Do you want to be the person to give the last dose of morphine to your mom? Whenever I would go visit her, which was about every three or four weekends, I would go down to Philadelphia to see her. Look here, I have curly hair. Oh my God. She would say, I want to go home. She kept saying, I want to go home. She could say those words. Yes. Um, and what did that mean to you? Well, to me, it meant she didn't want to be there. Whether it meant she wanted to rewind the world and go back to the way life used to be, whether it was, I'm done with this and I want to move on to the next stage. Even though she cannot speak, there is a quality about her that has uh, maintained itself that makes the staff love taking care of her, makes them love her. And there's been a quality of her that has made other people really love her all of her life. And it's amazing that that quality is still there.
It makes me not want my mom to be scared of aging. Because I think having a mother like grandma can make you scared of aging. Hello, oh, Edie. Oh, Dennis, How I'm talking you? about you. Nice to see you. Oh, oh gosh, it's so good. I guess he came back to the health center first. He, he did. He was and there, when, and that's when we had a very difficult you, conversation, right? You told me that yeah. he had Alzheimer's. I, and he, I just yeah. burst into tears. I, and you know, I was so. I thought it was more dumb. gentle than that, but basically, <laughs> I think the the delirium had pulled back a certain curtain and it showed how vulnerable his brain was. The question of growing old with Charlie never even, I never even thought about it. It just was such, uh, we were just made for each other. I was hoping to be able to take care of him all the way through to the end with the help of hospice. But there was so much night stuff. What's the legacy you're gonna leave? What's the last gift? you're gonna to leave to your family. It's, in a sense, it's the gift of knowing how to die. When we were really in the last year of his life, we were coping with early stages and into mid-stage of Alzheimer's, uh, Crohn's disease, diabetes, atrial fibrillation, that's heart tremors. Um, and then he died of cancer of the throat. Oh, Dennis and I were kind of on the same wavelength. He hadn't come up with the term slow medicine. And he'd seen a lot of what fast medicine will do to older people. The standard medical model is, emphasizes efficiency because it's really tied in with the economics of medical practice. It's designed to pick out one problem and say the problem is X, it's the cancer. It doesn't say the problem is as with Charlie, it's not the cancer, the cognition problem, the bowel problem that's still going on. Your body is nothing but a house for your soul. And that there comes a time when your body is, starts to fall apart and it's no longer a decent place for you as a person, your soul, your spirit and it's time to let your spirit out of that crumbling uh, house. It does, it's not, it's not, it's not um, depressing. It, it's simply talking about the kind of the realities that are gonna unfold for people. We have to become more comfortable with the idea that you know, some of us get good cards and some of us get the old maid. Right? 